The Book of True Life, Teaching 5 of 366. The Master Teaches, Admonitions and Assignments for the People of God, Divine Revelations, Mexico, from 1866 to 1950. The Lord Says, This is a moment of rejoicing for the Divine Spirit. For before the Ark of the New Covenant, the people of Israel have congregated. I have come again to lay out my path, and you have followed it. I have nourished and endowed you with my grace. This is a day for which Elijah has prepared and awaited a long time and the moment has come in which his spirit will rejoice. Elijah presents his sheep cleansed, for beforehand he had them washed in the fountain of grace, which is repentance, regeneration, and elevation. The number of the flock which the shepherd presents to me today is small. It is barely the beginning of the formation of my people, but it is my will that the first be united, so that they may set an example for the last. Do not come before me dejected and ashamed like the prodigal son. I want you to regard the house of your father as your own dwelling. The bell is ringing. The time has arrived. The multitudes are approaching. The sheep that are asleep will awaken, for Elijah approaches, preparing the spirits of children, adolescents, and the old, so that they may receive the light of my word and prepare them for the communication with my spirit. The multitudes have answered my call and come in search of my word, which is to them like reaching the promised land. They are anxious to hear my voice, which is peace and comfort, because their unrest, misery and hardships have caused suffering along their paths. They are those who bring petitions instead of an offering. Some present me with their ailments, others their lack of employment, and still others their poverty and tears. To all I will give more, and I shall make them understand that the Spirit comes before the flesh. Today they are my beginners, but through these benefits they will follow me until at last they are converted into my disciples. I give you my strength, so that you will not be overcome by temptation, which will entice you a great deal during your journey. I want love, charity, and harmony to prevail among you. It is my will that during this period of the sixth seal, humanity seek me through the Spirit. I want you to elevate yourselves to me. If I came during the second era for the purpose of becoming man, and to give you my life. Today, when I communicate through a human faculty, I will grant you my divine essence, and I will not allow you to slumber in your compliance while I carry the cross upon my back. I will teach you to carry upon your shoulders the part which corresponds to each one of you. You will recognize the path. It is traced with footprints of blood and sacrifice. If you want a flowery path full of pleasures, that will not guide you toward the summit of the mount, where your journey should end. I have named you the Marian people, for you are able to love and recognize the Divine Mother and approach her like a child who needs tenderness, or as a sinner who seeks intercession. The presence of Mary in the world is an indication of my love for men. Her purity is a heavenly miracle revealed to you. For me, she descended to earth to become a woman, and in her womb would germinate the divine seed, the body of Jesus, through whom the living word would speak. She comes anew to manifest herself during this period.
the love of Mary for you is like a heavenly ark. You will gather around her, as children do around their mother. Hear her sweet word, so that she will not find hardness in your heart. Repent and be receptive, so that her light may penetrate you, and you may feel her tenderness. Once you are thus prepared, make a promise before your God, before Mary and before Elijah, that you will form one single body and one single will. Make a vow before the Ark of the New Covenant that you will unceasingly struggle to uproot from your heart selfishness, hatred, and fanaticism. And if you keep your promise, truly, I say to you, the purification which you are enduring through your suffering will pass. O oh, my people, if even the rocks feel the justice of my word, why should you not feel it? If the earth trembles just by my voice, if the water becomes agitated, how can your spirit not be moved when it is the most dignified creature in all creation? The Master will untiringly come to teach and to give you his gentleness with the most beautiful lessons. Strive to conceive what the meaning the Ark of the New Covenant contains, for the time of the struggle is near at hand. If Jesus from the cross said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do, and in your ignorance you were forgiven, today I want you to behold my light, so that you will not violate the law again. The time is near in which those whom you regard as foreigners will come in search of my word, and in which the new generations will appear with greater spirituality. Soon you will behold among you men of different colors and languages, who will listen to me with love, and they will be converted into my disciples. For my word will re-echo to the confines of the earth. When they have been indoctrinated, they will return to their native lands, bearing this message. O disciples, who listen to my word with ecstasy, because your spirit knows how to elevate itself. There, where you have spiritually penetrated, is the sanctuary, the temple of the Holy Spirit. You have prepared yourselves with humility. You have regarded each other as brethren. You love one another in my divinity and you have attained this grace. Be apostles of this cause, so that you may work toward the restoration of all that I have instituted and which you have violated. Do not weaken, for anyone who bears the divine mark will be invincible. If you wish to preserve this grace for always, do not lose yourselves along the pathways of corruption. Do not go within darkened paths, because the Divine Shepherd will find you weeping like lost sheep. May everyone work toward the construction of this sanctuary, for no merit will be ignored by me. My word will teach you, your conscience will guide you, and your intuition will disclose in what moment and in what place you should express my word and practice charity. Seek the fields in order to sow and prepare them, clearing away the rocky ground. Make the barren fields productive, for I expect a fruitful harvest from your efforts. Thus there will be rejoicing in the one who gives as much as in the one who receives. I call you my warriors, and I bless you. The trumpet that is held by the angel of the sixth seal is being heard, and your promise which you have made spiritually before me is being recorded in the book of life. Be active, for a reward awaits you when you have concluded your work. You are my laborers who have received my seed during the three eras. 
But here are also those who have become lethargic when you have seen your fields turn golden with wheat. And you allow the worm to eat away the roots of the plants, rendering their fruits worthless. Remember your differences in the first eras, your disloyalty, your pitfalls. Behold why I find you dispersed and weakened. Remember that I announced I would return to bring you together again, and here I am. As the master, I have not come to behold your blemishes or your offenses. I have come to forgive you, to anoint you, and give you my wisdom once again. This is the new pact which you make with my divinity. This revelation is the Ark of the New Covenant. If you wish to proceed and never deviate from this course, go forth and comfort the sorrowful, heal the sick, save the lost, guide the blind, and nourish those who hunger for justice, understanding, and peace. Show the way to those with physical or spiritual ailments. Let them come before me for I will give them my balsam. However, I will not tell them that their iniquity is the cause of their suffering. If I approach the home of the humble, I will also enter the mansion of the mighty. Truly, I say to you, that in one and the other I have found brother against brother, and in those fields I will sow the seed of peace. I leave you this lesson, which contains law and justice, so that in imitating your master, you might convey peace where there is dissension, and spread charity where selfishness exists. Be in the life of your brethren, like stars which illuminate their way. Never adulterate my teachings. Manifest my work as a book which embraces only purity. And when you have concluded your journey, I will welcome you. I will disregard your spiritual blemishes, and I will grant you my divine charis, which will be your greatest reward when you reach the Promised Land. For I have given you in this era a handful of seeds, that you may learn to sow in fertile fields, and there allow them to multiply. I have taught you not to cut the fruit before its time, but to leave it on the plant until it ripens. You do not know how many centuries have passed until you again were called by me to become laborers of my fields. You were a people wandering through the pathways of the world until my love selected you from the multitudes. Today, I have enriched you and have made you conscious of your heritage. May no one attempt to imitate the prodigal son, for each return will be more painful. Do not permit selfishness to penetrate your heart again, and keep this heritage only for you. Do not live spiritually divided, and only in apparent unity, for although you deceive your fellow man, you cannot deceive me. If you know how to pray, you will not be lost. For besides Elijah, the spiritual shepherd who protects and guides, there are also your brethren, those whom I have placed before you on earth, so that they may advise and correct you. Seek the unification of all the congregations, and let it be the banner of peace, unity, and goodwill. May you never handle destructive weapons. The weapons that I have given you are of love. You are learning to heal the sick, and to resurrect the one who has died to a life of grace. You are learning to struggle, and to spread my doctrine. However. There are those who even with this pathway seek riches, elegance, and honors, and the truth is that they are unaware how much suffering it takes to purify those blemishes.
how great is the gift with which the spokesman has been endowed. What an abundance of knowledge of love and consolation passes through his faculty and his lips. He is the means between God and men, so that they may listen to me. Vanity or pride should not lodge within them, for if they do that, they will fall into temptation. Their example should be of gentleness, simplicity, and charity, so that they may fully enjoy my divine inspiration. But among them will be those who, regarding themselves as kings, will seek their subjects and surround themselves with flatterers. But will humanity believe them? Will they be able to resurrect those dead to a life of grace and comfort grieving hearts? No, these would only provoke mockery, which would not be against them, but against my doctrine. Your mission is to teach, but if you do not learn from me, what will you possibly teach? I love everyone equally. The same goes for the one who loves me and is zealous of my law, as well as the one who adulterates or prevaricates. I will test and correct these last, and in the end, they will become my good laborers. I will help you to comply with that promise that you made before the Ark of the New Covenant, and it will be then when you will have fulfilled the mission that you have brought to the world. I have always made my presence felt among you, so that you may live on the alert, and your mind and heart will always be sensitive to the spiritual lessons. The multitudes are approaching as the time passes by, and the observation of the last will be more penetrating in order to judge the essence of my word and your preparation. Purify yourselves. Without regeneration, you will be unable to bear good fruits. The light of my Holy Spirit is within your conscience, so that your deeds may be the testimony of my truth. Take advantage of the years, the centuries, and the eras, so that you may draw nearer to me. I say this to you because I see that you are indifferent to my teaching. On the other hand, when you feel that death is near, you weep because you wish to comply and make up for lost time. Do not fear to ascend the mount. You know that I await you at its summit. I, in Jesus, scaled the heights of Calvary, knowing that on its pinnacle the cross awaited me, and I was strong. Do not forget my lesson. I am using you to manifest myself to mankind. I am speaking my heavenly word through your lips. But if men, upon hearing it, doubt, it will not be because of its essence, but because of your imperfections. I am teaching you to transport yourselves in spirit by means of the prayer and your thoughts to whatever place you wish charity to be imparted. You will also have to convey yourselves physically in order to spread my doctrine to other lands. I will avail myself of your whole being. In order to form this people, I had to soften the hardened hearts, behind which you conceal your spirit, and it was my word of love which convinced you. Then I gave you weapons, which are my teachings, so that during your struggle you could overcome all obstacles, and I made you realize that in order to be named sons of Israel, it is necessary to practice my doctrine with purity and teach my law without altering it. What you ask me, and what you answer me, you do in silence, 
from the deepness of your heart. The years are long past in which I permitted each one of my disciples to get up physically before his brethren, to analyze my word, and answer my questions. How you have allowed time to erase those memories and remove my word from your mind. My teaching, like a fine chisel, purifies you, while life, with its vicissitudes and ordeals, prepares you. Be comforted during your bitter and difficult moments, keeping in mind that my wise and perfect law will judge everything. I have been in your affliction, so that through it you will seek me. I have touched you through poverty, so that you may learn to ask, to be humble, and to understand others. I have withheld your daily bread, to prove that he who has faith is like the birds that do not worry about it tomorrow. They behold the dawn appear as a symbol of my presence, and when they awaken, their first act is to elevate their melodies as an indication of thanks and as proof of their faith. I have made my presence felt through the ones you love most, to prove to you that the spirit is strong, and with that strength it can sustain the flesh during the great ordeals of this existence. The stubbornness of mankind is great, and each man bears within his heart a rock. But I will approach everyone with the spiritual caress of my word. Among the immense multitudes, there are plenty of those who would not be moved if they saw Jesus nailed to the cross and bleeding. Neither will they be affected by the cries of suffering and the flow of blood which is shed by their fellow men during these hours of ordeals for mankind. Nothing affects men anymore. They regard everything superficially and do not meditate at all. It is necessary for the light of my word to reach all spirits so that they may awaken to the truth, to love, to charity, then they will realize the reason for so many hardships. It is necessary for all to understand that I have prepared a place in eternity for each one of you, and that it is not of this world. You have come to comply along the path of your existence with that mandate of the Father which states, Be fruitful and multiply. However. It is already the time that your spirit should be prepared for its return to me. I will reveal and leave in writing many lessons during this period, for soon you will cease to hear me in this manner. Afterward, you will prepare yourselves, and my light will reach your spirit directly. It will be the time for you to arise as the true disciples of the Holy Spirit. You believed that the gift of prophecy, of the word, and of inspiration was a privilege only for the just and the saints. But during this period, I relieved you from that error by saying to the outcasts, You may also be my prophets, my emissaries, and my disciples. If humanity neglects you because of your physical humility, I will bring you nearer my table so that you may feel loved by me. How are you going to compensate the love that I have for you, O oh my people? With your faithfulness, or by chance with your ingratitude? Do not be satisfied with the first thing. Always aspire for more, because I am waiting for those prepared in order to send them to other lands with this good news. By chance, are you fearful of leaving your parents, wife, or children? Are you worried about leaving what belongs to you on earth? 
He who wishes to be my disciple will have to remember my disciples of the second era in order to imitate them afterward. Blessed is the one whose bodily death comes upon him, teaching my doctrine, for the light of his spirit will be very great. Always be prepared, for not even the angels are aware of that moment. This divine book, which contains my word, tends to perfect all spirits. Before it, there will be no elderly, no adults, no children, but only disciples. Read and be enlightened by this book, for it will reveal great teachings to you. You are the ones who have not shown any annoyance while listening to my word, which I have given you through these people, whom I have named Nightingales. How many times you have weakened along your path, and by only remembering some of my words, you have regained your strength. Today, when you face an ordeal, you seek a direct communication with my divinity by means of the spiritual prayer, and you struggle within your inner self to clear your mind in order to receive the grace which you have solicited from the Father. What you confess to me, I alone know it. But this confidant whom you have in me will never publicize your faults, nor much less denounce you. Again, I am teaching you to forgive others. Regard your ordeals as lessons and benefit by my teachings. Time passes quickly. Those who arrived as children are already in their youth. Those who began their journey in their adolescence have reached their maturity, and those who started in their middle age have become old. He who has learned to concentrate within his inner self while listening to my word has managed to keep it, but he who has allowed his thoughts to wander toward that which does not pertain to my work has emerged with his spirit devoid of teachings and an empty heart. Realize that if I have called you, it has not been only to improve you, but to enter in this manner into an obligation with your master and with your brethren to share something of what you have received in abundance. I will not allow you to manifest my work if you are defiled. What could you possibly convey to your brethren? Prepare yourselves, for all of you will have to watch over what I have entrusted to you. Are you not grateful before your father, who, as the supreme judge, gives you an opportunity to cleanse your sins through the practice of love instead of doing it through suffering? If you call this penitence, I say to you, that is the only penitence that I will accept. The day will arrive for you in which to reject what is superfluous and unrighteous in order to practice what is good and permissible, and it will be a true enjoyment instead of a sacrifice, not only spiritually, but also physically. I am preparing the pathways through which my emissaries will reach other lands and nations. My word of this period has fructified during the last years, because the houses of prayer have multiplied and the multitudes have increased. You feel incapable of arising and performing such a delicate mission, but truly I say to you, that my countless teachings and inspirations will place on your lips the gift of speech. However, in order for you to attain the fulfillment of that promise, 
it is necessary for you to have faith in me and in yourselves. And he who possesses this faith and complies with my law must not boast of his virtues, for then his word will be lacking in essence. Why has my word affected men of all classes? Because of its humility, purity, and simplicity. O oh, my people, teach children to pray for mankind. Their innocent and simple prayer, like the fragrance of flowers, will be elevated to me and will also reach the suffering hearts. Prepare the children. Show them the way to overcome temptations, and tomorrow they will take one more step onward than the one you have taken. For if you were able to understand my word, if you even knew the depth of each one of the thoughts which take form through the different spokesmen through whom I manifest myself, and if you knew the value of a single one of my teachings, you would not be so timid to speak of this work. You would feel capable of even reaching a battlefield, so that those men would hear the reading of one of my lessons. And in truth, I say to you, that you would see some weep in repentance and others of hope. Why are you sometimes unmoved? O oh, hardened hearts, who have become accustomed to the caress of my word, you are lethargic satisfied in having attained peace and comfort, without remembering that there are many who do not even have a crumb of this bread which you have squandered. You have not wanted to rejoice, contemplating the effect that the comforting word of the Master would cause in many hearts. O oh, my humble beginners, when are you going to improve in spirit? When will you be able to rule over the weaknesses of the flesh? I am the one who crosses the desert, spreading my divine word and searching for lost travelers. However, I wish that men would learn to share what they have received from me. That is why I say to you, O oh, my people, that you should be prepared to extend charity allowing these teachings to reach the ends of the earth. Make it possible that they reach all nations, seeking men of all walks of life. This is the best water that you can possibly offer those who thirst for love and truth. You still have not arisen to work for you are concealing the spiritual treasures that I have entrusted to you, while in other nations they perish because they have not received this message. They are multitudes who walk without direction, travelers who lack water and enlightenment. If you do not arise, O oh my people, of what use will your knowledge be? What do you intend to do which would be useful and beneficial for your future existence, that which awaits you in the spiritual realm? Be merciful with yourselves. No one knows when the moment will come in which his spirit will separate from the flesh. No one knows if on the next day his eyes will open to the light. Everyone belongs to the Lord of all creation, and you do not know when you will be lifted. Remember that not even the hairs on your head belong to you, not even the ground that you tread upon, that you yourselves do not belong here, that you do not need to have possessions of short duration, since your kingdom is not of this world either. Spiritualize yourselves, and you will possess everything within fairness and in measure according to your needs. And when the moment of your renunciation of this life arrives, you will elevate yourselves full of light to take possession of what belongs to you in the hereafter. O 
all my spiritual work throughout the times has had the goal of erecting in eternity a kingdom of happiness and enlightenment for all my children. My peace be with you.